Hey everyone, welcome back to Signal Processing with Paul. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is talk about how we can go from the Fourier series, which is taking or finding the spectrum of a periodic signal to the Fourier transform where we don't have any periodicity or basically finding the spectrum of a signal that doesn't necessarily repeat in time. So let's just go over what we did before. So for the Fourier series case, we have the forward direction where we calculate our c sub k, which equals one over t, the integral from zero to t of s of t e to the minus j two pi k t over big T with respect to our time variable. So this gives us a function of frequency index k, which is an integer. And then going back to our time function, s of t equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity. And this is going over k. So now we're going from k back to t. And this is of c sub k e to the plus j 2 pi k t all the way over big T. So now in this case, we're bringing t back in and we're getting rid of k, transforming back. So this makes sense. We can go forward and backward. In order to, to do this right, though, the first thing I'm going to do, what we're, what we're eventually going to do is take the limit as big T approaches infinity. But we also want to be sure we capture if, t, if our signal s of t has negative components as well. So notice how if I have a basically a, a periodic signal here like this, if I have a period of big T, it actually doesn't matter where I start this integral. As long as I'm going over an entire period, I can start it from minus T to zero, I can go from zero to T, or what we're gonna want to do is we're going to want to go from minus T over two to T over two. So first notice that we can write this as just as easily as C sub K, equals one over t times the integral from minus t over two to t over two. So we're still integrating over a single period, so this is going to be fine. And we have what we had before. We have our s of t e to the minus j two pi k t over big t dt. Now what I'm going to do is define a new variable f. And what f is going to be is basically k over big t. So basically, what this is representing is some sort of fractional piece of the integer k divided by our period. And as a result, we can write a function of f, we have s of f, is going to equal the integral from minus t over 2 to t over 2, s of t, and then just, of course, substituting in f for k over t, e to the minus j 2 pi f, and of course, we still have t dt. And notice how this equals t times c sub k. That's gonna come in handy in a little bit. So for now, let's just let s of f be this particular value. And the details on this will be clear later. Of course, we already have an integral, so we're basically getting ready to take the limit. What we're doing is just moving t around. Now, let's look at our inverse case. What we have before, we have s of t, this is little s, um, usually we use a capital letter to do our frequency terms. So we have little s of t is equal to the sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity of what we had before, which was our c sub k e to the plus j 2 pi k times t over big T. Now what I'm going to do is instead of c sub k, I'm going to try to write this as a function of our frequency value that we had before, which is f. So what this is going to be, if I substitute in c sub k, I will need to divide by c sub k on both sides. So I have the sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity of one over t times s sub f or s sub k over t times e to the j two pi f t over big, well, we don't need over big t now because we have f. So our k is going from minus infinity to infinity as we would like it to have. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and take the limit as t goes to infinity. So what we're going to say is we're going to take the limit as big t approaches infinity of the sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity of one over t times s of f e to the j two pi f times 
T. And if you notice what is going on here, basically these spectral lines are gonna become closer and closer together. And what you end up seeing is, <laughs> what, what you actually get here is actually a sort of Riemann sum. This is sort of like your delta x, because notice how st is going to infinity, one over t is getting smaller and smaller. And then we have this particular sum where k is going around. So this is in some ways like your individual x sub i, because t and k are going to infinity, and you have this as well. So this is kind of like your f of, the, well, f isn't the right, the right term because we have to, this is sort of like your function, call it z of f, where f is kind of capturing the x sub i and the t stuff. And what you get out of this, of course, is you get your function of time, s of t, equals the integral. Now this is the integral by looking at the bounds of the sum from minus infinity to infinity of s of f, which is our function here, just, just really this part on the inside, e to the j 2 pi f t. And if we look at this part up here, if we take the limit as t goes to infinity of this function, now that we don't have the one over t here, we can, we can do this. This is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of s of t e to the minus j 2 pi f t. So this is dt. This one is, notice how this is df, because f is the piece that is basically shrinking down. That's the kind of, the, uh, the f is the k over t piece that we have here. And sure enough, this is indeed what we see. So let's go ahead and write these down um, next to it over here. So if this is the Fourier series and this is the Fourier transform. S of f is equal to the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of our time function times e to the minus j two pi f t like this. And we get back to the time domain by basically saying S of t is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of s of capital S of f e to the plus j two pi f t. This is going to be df, we're integrating out f, and this is dt. So the c sub k part is pretty similar, but the, um, the, the time part, or going back to the time domain, rather than a sum over integers, we now have an integral over a continuum because that k over t piece, we're not just looking at integral or integer components, we're looking at the whole series over time at every possible point in the spectrum. So what the Fourier series, of course, did is we had our spots at, you know, 1 over t, 2 over t, etc. You know, this is minus 1 over t, minus 2 over t, etc, etc. And what we've done is now replace these sort of places that we've computed it with more and more and more points until we have a continuum here on the f axis, where we're defining f as just you know, k over t. So as we're letting t go down to infinity, what ends up happening is you kind of, one way to think about it as you let t to go to infinity is you're kind of squishing all these together and eventually you get um, this particular thing. So that's what we see. Hopefully now you understand how we get the Fourier transform from the Fourier series. It's a little bit involved. There's a little bit of math to do it. But now with this in mind, we can now, of course, take the Fourier transform or look at the spectrum of signals that aren't necessarily periodic in time, which is what we set out to do. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.